In the real analysis course, you will start with the good stuff. On lecture three. Cantor's remarkable theorem and the rational's lack of the least upper bound property. So, you will do the first part of things. So, this is from the last lecture. Definition. The power set of A includes all subsets of A possible, <coughs> always including the empty set. And we got the one long example. And then the theorem, which was Cantor related. Again, from the last class. And then, remark. So, now we'll start by proving this theorem over here. So let A be a set. Define function A to P of A. My F of X. Then if f of x equals to f of y, so right now we're trying to prove to get to the point where we can say it's less than or equal to, and then we prove it's strictly not equal to. which implies x equals to y. Thus, f is 1 to 1. <coughs> and now we have proved, proving it 1 to 1, proving that function 1 to 1, means we have proved this statement over here. Now, our second goal is to remove this equal thing at the bottom and just make it strictly no. So we now show the cardinality, the cardinalities are not the same. <sighs> so, proof by contradiction. Assume, so let's assume they are equal. Then, then there exists a bijective function. Uh, bijective function g a to the power set of a to so define a set b of a b a subset of a b x 
gives an A. X. X isn't in G of X. <laughs> then B is in power set. Now, next part, since G is surjective, there exists a B in A. What? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is not only surjective, it's also injective. But if it's bijective, it's also surjective. So we could use a surjective rule over here. If it's about such that, this is such that, not 5T. Such that. G of B equals to capital B, different B. Case one. B is in G of B. Well, that's kind of a contradiction. B in G of B, then B is in, if B is in G of B, then B is in B and B. B shouldn't be in G of B because that's a contradiction to a previous statement. X isn't in G of X. So that shouldn't be possible. B is in B, so B cannot be in G of B. That is... <coughs> that's a contradiction to our statement. G of X, G of B. But now let's get the more interesting statement. What if B is not in G of B? Not. If B is not in G of B, then B is in B, which means B is in G of B. So, this is conf so contradiction thus we have shown b is in g of b b b contradicts b isn't in g of b so this is very false so after all of this random defining i know it's a lot it's a bit weird these proofs are weird i don't know how people come up with them but so well we can just tell you now what we came up with all of this to all this g of b madness a is not equal to the power set which means a and by the way these are cardinalities is strictly less than the power set okay so We're basically done with the first part, but it's gonna. But I'm gonna show you a sneak peek of the definition of of the real numbers. In the next part, we will uncover what this means. But there exists, there exists an ordered field. Containing, containing the rational numbers with the least upper bound, with LUBP. Which we denote R. If you already know what how to describe this, then you can skip all of... Oh wow, you could skip a lot.
Yeah, you can skip like all of my adults. And you can just go probably on to lecture five or something. If you understand what an ordered field is, at least a for bound property. So, we are done with this part.